it was criticized for being brutal and glorifying the mafia. There were even petitions with thousands of signatures addressed to Netflix to pull it from the streaming list. But 365 Days has come to its third part, and it's coming sooner than you thought it would come. Stay with us in the next couple of minutes, as we're going to tell you everything about the third movie of the controversial trilogy, 365 Days. For those who still didn't watch the previous two movies, we will say that yes, the movies are full of erotic scenes, and yes, there are some comparisons with the Fifty Shades trilogy, but the story is so much different. 365 Days films are based on the novel trilogy written by the Polish author Blanka Lipinska. When the first movie was released in June 2020, it gained a lot of attention and became one of the most watched items in many territories across the world. But even the popularity wasn't enough, because the movie got so many negative reviews from critics and movie media. There are so many movies with violence and controversy, but 365 Days passed the worst by the critics worldwide. Just after the premiere, Collective Socierie, a French feminist organization, started a petition that gathered over 40,000 signatures. It was addressed to Netflix with a request for the movie to be pulled from the streaming platform. Some other petitions were getting over 100,000 signatures. But instead of giving up on the movie, Netflix released a sequel on April 27, 2022, that is named 365 Days This Day. The story in the first movie started when Massimo, a leader of the Sicilian Torricelli crime family, kidnaps Laura Beale, a beautiful Polish girl that came to Italy to celebrate her 29th birthday. Massimo is obsessed with Laura, and he will do anything to take her to bed. She denies him at first, but after many events, she falls in love with him. Now, maybe this doesn't sound like something brutal or controversial, but many scenes will maybe make you change your mind. There always will be haters, positive and negative comments for every show. We're not going to criticize anything, we're just going to tell you everything about the movies. Massimo even started a conflict with the rival Mafia family for Laura in the first movie. She'll get pregnant, and they'll prepare for the wedding. In the second film, Massimo and Laura are married. She lost her unborn baby in an accident at the end of the first part. She keeps this a secret from Massimo, and her only friend Olga knows about it. Laura has to be a quiet, abiding housewife, a role that she very quickly starts to despise. A third movie that is supposed to complete the novel trilogy is on its way. But before we go on, please be nice and do the thing that everyone did before you. Scroll down just a bit and press that like and subscribe button below the video. And while you're there, don't be shy to ring the bell as well. A little herp doesn't hurt anyone, don't you agree? As the second movie was released just on April 27th, it's hard to say when the third and final movie will come. The good news for the fans of the movie is that they'll not be waiting for so long as the second and the third films were announced together at the same time. Both films were filmed back to back, so it might be possible that the third movie could come up just before the end of 2022. Even so, it'll be more short if we say that it will come in early 2023, because it will take some time to gather the impressions from the second movie. The filming for both the first and second sequel started in May 2021, in areas around Italy and Poland. The production was at first scheduled to begin in 2020, but it was delayed like many other shows due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Many of the cast and crew from the first film reprised their roles in the second movie as well. That included Anna Maria Cicluca as Laura Beale, Michele Morone as Massimo Torricelli, Magdalena Lemparska as Olga, Natasha Urbanska as Anna, and Otar Severlides as Domenico. The third movie will again bring back Cicluca and Moroni as Laura and Massimo. The newcomer from the second movie, Simone Susina, will reprise his role as Nacho. It is also confirmed that Lemparska and Serralides will also come back as Olga and Domenico. The duo got engaged in the sequel, so there is no point to be left by. We just hope that their marriage will be better than the one between Massimo and Laura. It is not sure that we'll be watching Massimo's long-lost twin brother, Adriano, who was also played by Moroni, or his former lover, Anna. Both characters were shot at the end of the second movie, but their fate stays unclear now. Despite the two sequels being filmed at the same time, Netflix hasn't shared any details for the third film. 
For now, there's no trailer, teaser, or photos from the shooting. The author of the 365 Days trilogy books revealed that the name of the third movie will be Next 365 Days. Quote, I am hugely honored that the remaining two parts of my 365 Days trilogy will be brought to life on screen by Netflix. I'm so excited to show fans of my novels all over the world this fresh look at the characters, and to continue Laura and Massimo's story, says Lipinska. Many fans of Lipinska's books are disappointed by the ending of the novel series. The final novel that is the basis for the third movie has only a 2.9 star rating out of 5 on Goodreads. Quote, why write a love story and then ruin it? There's no point, says one of the comments. Another person wrote that the last book just destroyed all the magic of the series. But enough of the negative side. We can always rely on Netflix, as this studio is one of the best in the world, and they know how to do their job right. We're sure that they'll listen to the fans, and will make things just as the fans want it. The next 365 days, or the third book of Lipinska's trilogy, is available to read in English. The book may give us a preview of what to expect in the third film. Laura's life as the wife of the Mafia boss is always put at risk, as she might be a potential target for attack by his enemies from other Mafia families. We know that she lost her unborn baby after the attack in the tunnel. In the second book, she had another miscarriage. Things for her will get even darker in the third one, when we'll see her struggling with alcohol addiction. The book says that she will need a heart transplant, and that Nacho will be the man that will find her the organ through his connections. She will fall in love with him, and Massimo reacts by killing her pet dog and sending it to her in a box. Massimo will kidnap her again, but she will manage to escape. Before all of this happens, we might see Laura and Massimo trying to fix their relationship. There could also be an escalation of the war between the mafiosos, and maybe Massimo will be injured in these events. However, the next 365 days could still make some changes to its source material, so don't expect to know everything that will happen just by reading the book. One of the biggest questions is who Laura will end up with, Massimo or Nacho. If we can believe the rumors, then Laura will eventually escape with Nacho. She'll get married with him, and they will have children. Of course, there could always be some changes. Maybe Netflix will listen to the critiques by the fans and will change the ending. We will have to wait for the official synopsis to find out. On a related note, what do you think of this movie trilogy so far? Do you think that the third movie will overcome the critics and will be more successful? Let us know in the comment section down below! If you liked the video, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss our next videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.